All right, today we're gonna to be going at replacing the IAC gasket. And in order to get to the IAC gasket, we have to remove the entire throttle body and intake components. You do not have to drain the coolant. These are coolant lines, but you can just take this coolant line up and then just hold it upwards so that the coolant doesn't drain out because this is the highest point in the entire cooling system. In my case, because I have a coolant problem, I'm going to be draining and filling and draining and filling and draining and filling many times over the course of the next month or so. I'm just going to throw this in there as one of those drain and fills. In your case, you do not have to drain the coolant. If you don't want to, you can just disconnect the IAC right there and leave it pointed upwards so that it doesn't drain any coolant out. If you want to try and do this without jacking up the vehicle, it's a really tight fit and you could get some on the ground because there's no room for your hand to fit in there. I'm going to try and cheat a little bit and not raise the car when I do this. All right, we're draining. And I'll just let that drain for about five minutes or till it all leaks out and I'll screw my pet cock back. Now, while this is draining, I'm gonna go ahead and start removing my intake components. Right to the right of the throttle body is your throttle spring. And there's gonna be a cable connected to that. And I have in past videos shown exactly in detail how to remove that cable. I'm not going to rehash it. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. Two bolts and two nuts on the throttle body. Just pull straight up on it. Just hose that out of the way. Now we're gonna to have to remove our clamps off of the coolant hoses. All right, well. There's some rust in there. Okay. Oh. Yeah, it looks like there's some shit in there too. Now we got our throttle body up. Here is where the coolant connects on top of the IAC and comes out the bottom. As you can see, that is that's pretty rusted there. All right, let's go over to the bench. Here is our new IAC gasket FS. 0113W89. So this OEM part number, IAC gasket, is the gasket and the seal. And this is the most important part, is that seal. Look how dirty that water is. This part down here was completely wet. This part up here, bone dry. Coolant never got in here. So I'm gonna blow in through this top port and you should be able to blow out through this bottom port. So we're good. Yes, it is kind of coated with rust in there from all the, the cooling issues that I have. What we're really interested in here, obviously, is getting at the IAC. And you could just leave this wire right on. That, that doesn't matter at all. Let's get out our screwdriver and pray to God we don't strip these threads. These four bolts right here, you can cut the heads off of this. If you want to take the IAC plunger apart, you can cut these off and it will just come right off because they're not threaded on this half of this bracket. These, however, are threaded all the way down. So if you strip the screw head on this, you're done, that's it. You have to buy an entire new throttle body and IAC. Yeah, I can't even imagine the cursing that you would do if you strip these screws. These screws are not the ones that usually have the problem. These ones are, just FYI. Uh, this is why it's important to take this off and do this on the bench. It's so that you can get enough leverage so that you don't strip these screws. These are very, very, very important screws. This whole entire thing probably cost about $300 to $400 currently. If you strip this stupid little screw, you're going to destroy all of it, except for your throttle position sensor. That screw is threaded all the way through. You cannot just cut the head of this one off and take that off. Not gonna happen for these four. You can do that for the ones on here, for the ones on the plunger side, but you cannot do that on the ones on the throttle body IAC side. Oh, Jesus. All right, there's got to be some other screw here that I'm missing. I was just being too gentle with it. Just take a hammer, whack it right there. Comes right apart. 
there's obvious signs of leakage around that gasket. It was leaking out the front though, as it should have been. Make sure that you don't get any of this junk down inside your IEC on either side, because then it's gonna get stuck in an air channel and that's basically an obstruction. So I got lots of cleaning to do. So I'll be right back, kazoo. So I'm just gonna go in and clean off this old gasket using a razor blade. And that'll come off fairly easy. But it takes a while. Man, that's a chunk. That is a chunk missing there. And that is right where that seal rides. That seal rides right about there. Right on both sides of that freaking thing. Uh, I might need a new IEC. If that is not able to seal correctly, it's just gonna leak coolant from here down into here. And this goes into your intake manifold. Yeah, I might need new IAC because of that. And that could be why I'm continually having leaks on my IAC. Man, here is the seal. And as you can see, there is rust and oxidation underneath of that seal, which means that this thing was leaking. And this seal right here is 17 years old. And I bet you it'll break because it's so old and brittle. Yep, it's supposed to be rubber. So we got a new one anyway, so we'll just replace that. Let the sanding continue. All right, I finished cleaning it up. I used my bench grinder just to grind off some of the oxidation, make it look a little shiny. Uh, but mostly it was to get off all the rust that was around here. I can't get on the back side of this one. You could take a wire brush and do the same exact thing just with a wire brush. It'll just take you 10 times longer. I'm ready to put my two halves back together. You gotta be real careful with this thin gasket. You do not want to break this. And try and avoid getting grease and stuff on it too. As far as the design is concerned, it's supposed to leak outside of the IAC right here. So this little bit is supposed to not be there. That's perfectly fine. It was like this. All right, I got it all bolted back together. That should be about it for the IAC replacement. So tomorrow we're gonna get into timing. Yay! We're gonna be setting base idle speed and ignition timing using a timing light. Cause I got one. Yay! Cool.